Today in this video, I will share some basic BGP configurations in our service provider network. We will cover both IBGP and eBGP configurations. Within our ISP, we will configure IBGP while eBGP will be configured between ISP1 and ISP2 and facing the customer routers. We will start with ISP1. EBGP will be configured between XE Router 1 and XE Router 2 facing Customer Router 1, while IBGP within the network. For the network details, create loopback interface 0 in CE Router 1, then advertise to BGP and use AS number 1 for the BGP process. Use AS number 12345 within ISP1. We will use 2 slash 24 subnets from our LAN network, which is 10.11. Dot zero, dot zero slash 16 between CE Router 1 and XE Router 1 and 2. Let us begin with eBGP configuration between the customer and PE routers. Basic eBGP configurations require three steps, which are define BGP process, establish BGP neighborship, and advertise the networks into BGP. To save time, all the IP addresses are already configured both in customer and PE routers. For now, eBGP between CE router PE routers will be in global IPv4 BGP neighborship. Later on, we will configure eBGP under VRF. Before we configure BGP, let us verify our basic configurations and conduct ping test to check reachability. Basic connectivity is now working. Let us build eBGP neighborship. Let us start with our customer router, which is CE Router 1. Refer to the configuration commands on the screen. By default, IPv4 address family unicast is activated. Disable it for future activation of other address family and manually activate it under router BGP. Then, advertise the loopback interface network under IPv4 address family. The customer router is done. Let us move to XE Router 1 and XE Router 2 and activate BGP. Here, since we disabled the BGP default IPv4 first, we need to activate the neighborship manually under the address family. After a few seconds, we can see that the eBGP neighborship is already established between XE Router 1 and CE Router 1. Let's move to XE Router 2.
eBGP configuration is done in ISP1 facing CE router 1. Let us conduct some basic verifications using the commands on the screen. Issue the command show IP BGP summary to display the status of all BGP connections on our routers. The output shows that the BGP neighborship between the customer and PE routers are already established with some important details like the A's number, uptime or downtime, and the prefixes received. Next, issue the command show IP BGP to display the contents of the BGP routing table on our PE routers. The asterisk output means that the next hop is valid, while the greater than symbol shows the best path to the network. The other columns are the next hop address and BGP attributes on how the networks are learned. eBGP configuration is done in ISP1. Let us now proceed with iBGP configuration. Configure the PE routers as client, while XE router 3 to be the route reflector to avoid BGP full mesh configuration on our network. Let us begin with XE router 1. Then, apply the same configuration on the other PE routers. Copy the commands in XE router 1, then apply to the other PE routers. After the PE routers, configure IBGP and XE router 3, then set it as the route reflector. Here in our P router or root reflector, we are manually configuring one by one the neighborship to every PE router since we only have few routers involved. For a large scale environment, we could do a peer group to simplify the configuration. IBGP is done, let us do some basic verifications on our routers. Let us check our P router which is XE router 3. As the output shows, 
All BGP neighbors are already established and we are receiving one prefix from XE Router 1 and XE Router 2. But, as noticed, it is not the best path, meaning XE Router 3 will not advertise this network to the other PE routers as confirmed in XE Router 5. For XE Router 3 to install the network in each routing table and advertise it to the other clients, we need to force or override the next hop behavior of XE Router 1 and 2 and advertise them as the next hop routers. To do this, issue the command next hop self in XE Router 1 and XE Router 2 towards XE Router 3. Now, let us verify the BGP routing table of XE Router 3 to XE Router 5. As we can see, the prefix advertised by the customer router is now received and installed in ISP1. With this, our BGP configuration task in ISP1 is already done and successful. I hope that this is informative to you and thank you for watching.